how's it going? Just here to remind you to click the like button, subscribe you to the channel so you don't miss any videos and stay well inside our entire universe of Dragon Ball Super. Without further ado, let's go back to the point. After the intense fight, Kakarot was quite impressed with Goku's transformation into a Super Saiyan God. He approached his friend and asked if he knew how to merge with that form. Goku excited confirmed that yes and said that it would be interesting to see the result of the fusion. Vegeta, who had been watching the conversation, intervened and said that the fight had been impressive, but there was something he didn't understand. How to transform into a Super Saiyan? Goku and Kakarot were stunned by Vegeta's revelation. After all, he was extremely strong even without a transformation, even going so far as to clash with the powerful Super Saiyan 2. Goku and Kakarot decided to explain how the transformation worked to Vegeta and began training him so that he could reach that form. Over the days, Goku and Kakarot began to teach Vegeta about the different forms of transformation, each with its own particularities. Vegeta, while initially reluctant, has shown himself to be dedicated to learning and pushing his own limits. They trained together tirelessly until finally, Vegeta managed to achieve Super Saiyan 4. Meanwhile, Goku and Kakarot continued to talk about fusing into a Super Saiyan God. They knew it would not be an easy task, but they were confident in their abilities to pull off this unprecedented feat. When the time finally came, Goku and Kakarot geared up and performed the fusion, transforming into an incredibly powerful warrior. The result fusion form left all the other warriors speechless. It was a perfect blend of Goku and Kakarot's abilities and powers. With unrivaled strength, Vegeta, who had just achieved Super Saiyan form, felt even more motivated to train and reach new levels of power. The merger also opened up space for learning. Goku and Kakarot had the opportunity to improve themselves even more, learning new techniques and combat strategies. They trained together and challenged each other, always looking to improve and overcome their limits. After finishing their training, Goku, Kakarot, and Vegeta are faced with 10 unknown beings that invade the planets where they are. These creatures seem to have skills similar to Saiyans and immediately try to steal the vitality from the environment, leaving the three warriors alert to the situation. Without giving names or any kind of dialogues, the variants attack furiously, but they are no match for the combined strength of Goku, Vegeta, and Kakarot. The three launch powerful blows and combat techniques, easily defeating the variants and protecting the planet's vitality. The battle is quick and soon ends with the victory of the Saiyans. After the battle, Goku, Kakarot, and Vegeta are left wondering who those creatures were and where they came from, but they have no answers. After the battle, then... The three warriors approach the defeated variants, curious to find out who these mysterious invaders were and where they came from. The variants appear to the unconscious but still alive. Goku approaches the first variant and tries to wake him up. Hey, who are you? He asks. The variant doesn't respond, just stares at Goku with a blank stare. Kakarot then tries a more direct approach. Why did you want to steal from here? Speak up! He says, raising his voice a little. None of these variants responds, and Vegeta starts to get impatient. This is a waste of time. They're just weak worms that came here to steal our vitality. They have nothing useful for us, he says, crossing his arms. But Kakarot is persistent. He knows that there's more to this invasion than just vitality theft. He goes through his stuff and finds some instructions. After a few minutes, he makes a startling discovery. They were sent by a mad scientist who wanted to steal the planet's vitality for his own experiments. They didn't even know what they were doing here, says Kakarot, surprised. Goku looks at Kakarot, impressed. This is crazy. Who would be able to do something like that? He asks. Vegeta, however, looks more annoyed than surprised. It doesn't matter to us who is responsible. There were a weak obstacle we just got over with. Let's just get out of here. He says, starting to walk away. But Kakarot isn't ready to give up. He knows there's more to be discovered about this invasion and he wants to find out the truth. I think we should track the scientist down and find out who he is. He could be dangerous. He argues. Goku agrees. Kakarot is right. If there's someone behind us, we need to know who he is and what he wants. He says, looking to Vegeta for support. Vegeta looks reluctant, but ends up giving in. Okay! Let's follow this lead, but I want this to be quick. I don't want to waste more of my time on this. Kakarot raises the possibility that the mad scientist responsible for the variants could be on one of the nearby planets, stating that he certainly is strong to have turned so many variants into his minions. He suggests that they should be careful 
as the scientists could be draining the vitality of other variants as well. I believe the best way to find out where the mad scientist is, is by going to the nearby planets around here. He must be around, and he must be quite strong to have turned so many variants into his minions, says Kakarot. But we need to be careful, because he might be draining the vitality of other variants. Judging by the strength of the variants we defeated so far, I believe we can handle him. Vegeta. I agree. Not just anyone can do that. The variants look so lifeless. <sighs> As if they have been drained of their vitality. Exactly, Vegeta. I believe the scientist is stealing the vitality of the variants to strengthen himself. But is this possible? That is a good question, Kakarot. Perhaps he can turn vitality into power. How does he benefit from that? Why would he be stealing the planet's vitality? Maybe he's planning to use that power to escape. Vegeta was completely enraged. Just imagine an insane warrior using a cowardly strategy of stealing others' vitality to become stronger. His face grew grim and closed. He brows furred and nostrils flaring with anger. His eyes gleamed with a savage intensity as his muscles tensed, ready to act at any moment. Vegeta was a proud Saiyan warrior and his honor was something he took very seriously. The thought of a breed of his stooping to such cowardly and despicable behavior angered him in beyond measure. He couldn't accept that someone would use such dishonorable tactics to become stronger, especially when that strength is gained at the expense of other lives. The mere idea of someone tarnishing the name of Saiyan with such an attitude was enough to make the veins of his neck throb with anger. He fought with all his might to control his anger and not act impulsively. But his dislike for the dis but his dislike for the scientists and his actions only increased by the second. <sighs> I've changed my mind. I'm going after that bastard. Can allow a army like him to use our fellow creatures to increase his power. It's a dishonor to our race. I won't rest until I put down in his place. Bro, how bibble are Vegeta? First you didn't want to get involved, and now you're determined to chase this mad scientist? <laughs> I understand your anger. It also makes me angry just imagining it. But we're still not sure if that's what happens. The three Saiyans then decide to go from planet to planet until they find the scientist. But hey, my partner, what do you believe? Will Goku find the scientist? What do you expect on the next episode and the next planet? What can happen in the midst of all this? Regardless of what it is, it is more than important that you already expose it here in your comments so that we can enter into that crazy debate. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.